think that possibly you could spend your life with me. Just girl, this love is Broadcasting from the First National Bank Tower, this is KLEKLP Jonesboro. The voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. Good Monday morning, Jonesboro. This is meteorologist Tim Root with your KLEK 1 to 2.5 forecast. Mostly sunny, hot today in the mid 90s, a south wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. And don't forget about the debate between Team Jonesboro and the Citizens Tax Enough today at 3 p.m. live on KLEK and also streamed live on our Facebook. Looks like temperatures tonight with mostly clear skies will be in the low 70s. Tuesday and Wednesday, mostly sunny, hot again, low to mid-90s. Your life, your music, we're KLEK, 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. Russia's ruling parties registered significant losses in Moscow parliament elections. British Airways pilots are on strike for two days over pay and conditions with 1,700 flights cancelled. The director of Iran's nuclear energy agency says his country has the right to gradually downgrade commitments made under the 2015 nuclear deal. And UK lawmakers will vote again later on whether there should be a snap election, but are expected to reject it for now. It's 9.01. Community Conversations is brought to you by Arkansas Early Learning, offering no-cost child care in Jonesboro and Northeast Arkansas. Applications at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. K-L-E-K L-P Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. KLEK 102.5 FM, good morning to you on your Monday. It says September 9, 2019. This is Community Conversations. Kato Wonder is in the studio with you. I am joined by Kubila Jones, host of Community Conversations, and our guest is running late today. We're going to have to get him. If uh, Once he gets in, I'm sure he's probably listening on the radio. But join us in just a couple moments. We will have Arkansas State University Chancellor Dr. Kelly Danfoss. Always a pleasure to have him in the studio when he joins us today. So while we're waiting on Dr. D to join us in the studio, just want to remind each and every one of you, 3 o'clock p.m. today, don't miss it, the debate between Team Jonesboro and Citizens Text Enough. We're going to debate from 3 o'clock p.m. until 4.30 p.m. And of course, you will have an opportunity to ask your questions and give your feedback as part of the show. And of course, we don't tell you which way to vote. We don't endorse, support, or oppose the tax issue. But if you have not already voted, we definitely encourage each and every one of you to vote because, hey, the tax is either going to pass or it's not going to pass. So why not weigh in and make your voice known? So, Q, what's, what's on your mind today? Well, Put the mic a little close to you. What I want people to do is really listen um, and make an informed decision if you are deciding to vote, which I hope people are exercising their right. Um, I have planned, I'm sorry, planned, typed some questions that I hope that get to the heart of the matter and will kind of push them to be transparent about their intention. <laughs> All right. And, and there he is. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we asked for an additional donation for being late. <laughs> <laughs> Red Wolf gear. <laughs> and I got on my, my A State Red, Red Wolf shirt on. Here's a Red Wolf pin for my favorite radio personality. Thank you. All right, well, thank oh, you. No, so, no. Well, yeah, give, <laughs> give, yeah, give it to the queen. That would be me. Thank you. All right, so, all right, so Kelly, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Well, I got a little bit of a cold. I got a cold last weekend. I'm just about done with it now. Though. Well, we, we pray that they're just going all the way. So, let's let's talk about them A State Red Wolves. You know, got to throw them wolves up. Wolves so, up. so let, let's talk about. Let, let's talk about the events of this past weekend's game. Obviously, very emotional time. Coach Anderson walking into the hotel, surprising the team, and the team just being uh, beyond excited to see him. And that energy and passion just trans- transforming into the game itself. You could just kind of see a sense of urgency as they played, and the victory was overwhelming. So you, with you actually being there, just kind of talk about – what you saw as far as the emotions of that day? Well, I'll tell you that uh, on Friday, Terry told me that, that Coach might come uh, to the game. It was pretty much a big surprise if he was going to come. The students didn't realize he was going to be there. And I, I think even Coach wasn't sure that he was going to do it till the very last minute. I mean, he was I mean, it's still a very emotional time for him. And, and 
you've all probably been in a situation like this, just being like, if you've just been sick for a while and going back to the work for the first time, kind of like the first day is kind of weird. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and for him, it's because it's been so public what he's been through is probably very difficult to know when's the, when's the best time to come. And the second part is you don't know if coming back will be a benefit mm -hmm. or a hindrance. Will it, will, will it make the students feel you know, well, they'll get distracted and act differently because he's there. Uh, but in the end, uh, at some point, he's got to come back, and uh, and he thought this was a good time to come back, and so uh, so he flew in early uh, that day and hung out with uh, some some of the leadership of the university for a while, and then and, and the athletics department, and then surprised the guys, and they were you could tell they were so excited to see him back, I and because uh, you know, <laughs> you know, Wendy was for many of them like a like a second mom. She wasn't just the coach's wife I mean, she's very actively involved in their life and and a young man like Omar Bradley for example was I mean he he was very very close to her and so losing her was hard on them uh, as as hard on them as it as it was on many of us even for they're, they're so much closer but they feel like he's like a second dad for them for many of them and that's uh, I think I think players have very close relationships with their coaches generally but Co but coach Anderson is very personable and very close with this young man and so so he uh, so so I, th I, I think it was a big uplift I thought when when that happened I thought this game is over right now because the, the guys are so fired up and and uh, I, I told some people, you know, it's 4.30 in the afternoon, we've already won this game. And sure enough, we came out and we just, we just you know, tore them apart. And so, you know, it was the biggest road win against a non-conference team since uh, 1998 or something like that. So what? like a long time, maybe in the, wow. maybe in the 80s, it, it, back when we were a Division II football team. So mm -hmm. it's been a long time since we've done that. So. Well, again, it, it, was, it was just awesome to see. And I have to say, I actually yeah. like the, the stadium uh, – site did what you want. I think that was actually a pretty nice touch to actually watch the game on Facebook and interact with different people. Um, and, you know, they had different things going on. Like, they was inviting people to send pictures uh, to get on there. Kelly actually took your picture that you took and uh, shared it. They didn't actually put it on there. They didn't but put I, it on there. But I thought it would have been a good picture if they had actually chosen the one that you took of the library when it was lighted pink and it had the, oh, new, yeah. the new how. Uh, statue uh, oh, in the background. Idea. I saw, they, and I tagged you in it. Yeah, I saw that they. Um, uh, I saw that uh, two things. I saw a lot of people were saying how great the format was watching on Facebook, and mm -hmm. I I've never watched a game of War on the Road because I'm usually I'm always there with them, but I had several people said they liked the format, and uh, I saw that they that the basketball team, uh, the coaches were all together, and I think several of the players were together watching the game, and they posted the picture. And they they actually put that one up there. Oh, okay, so, so it's it's still so made its way on there. there. Yeah. So so anyway. Okay. Well, I don't feel so yeah. bad about stealing it. Then. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> well, they they post a picture of themselves. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're watching. It's not the Howl statue. So I need to get after the Facebook people. Get that Howl statue up there. So. Oh, yeah. Let's kind of talk about that a little bit. Uh, that's a new tradition that your wife has started each year. Each year she comes up with something new, a gift to give to the university. Last year it was the. The wolf statue right near the entrance of campus. No, no last the year was the water fountain. fountain. The water fountain. Yeah, mm -hmm. the wolf statue came from someone, some of uh, the ASU uh, Mexico campus. Okay. okay. So, that but she gave the water fountain last year with the the dog the dog uh, the dog drinking area and then there's a wheelchair accessible fountain and then a water uh, bottle filling station and uh, so we call it a hydration station. Okay. You know, so. Um, yeah, she gave that last year. Mostly what she's trying to do is, is encourage, you know, she and I are encouraging people to get exercise and go walk around campus. And there's not a lot to see. Our beauty, our, our, many of our buildings have a lot of beautiful art inside them. If you've been mm -hmm. in the humanities building or the nursing building, yes. uh, they've got a beautiful piece of art inside, but not much on the outside. So the first one, there's no water fountains anywhere outside of campus. If you're okay. walking around, nowhere to get a drink of water, especially if you've got a dog with you. So the, that was the first thing. Then this year was the Howell statue, and then next year we'll, you know, every year we'll add something, and that's all Beth's deal. So, well, we, we're looking forward to seeing what she comes up with in the future. I am too. I am too. Have you ever um, entertained the thought, the idea of maybe putting um, benches or seating around, maybe that either is don donated by alumni or some other? Yeah, she's she's working on that too. There's okay. a new program she's putting together. So uh, we actually have a few few benches out there. So okay. Dr. Ferlasco has a bench. Uh, right in front of the library, for example. Okay. Um, and there are benches around, but none of them are named. So we're going to actually have a, a, a naming program where people can donate money 
and I don't know what the price point is, a couple thousand dollars, something like that, okay. to put their name on a bench and so there's more seating area. We have some benches out that are some metal ones that are not very comfortable to sit on, but okay. um, they, they last a long time. Okay. They're not very <laughs> comfortable to sit on. Uh, and so there's some idea of maybe changing some of those out and then putting having sponsors sponsor those. Yeah. It's a nice way to memorize, uh, memorialize someone. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of universities do that, have a, a, an endowed bench program. So. Okay. Now, um, in the area, and I don't think I've ever seen it personally, but the arch, the arch. Yes. Um, are those cobblestones engraved with people's names? No, no there's there no, any? there's no names there. Oh, that we have engraved okay. names at the alumni Cooper Alumni okay. Center. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of a neat tradition. If you graduate, you can buy a brick there, and actually, it's not very expensive to buy a brick there. You can pay and it out then, over time. Actually. And you can pay it out over time. Have you done that? <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, at the at the arch though, there are boxes that go around, um, like just big concrete boxes that go around the arch, and they started about oh, maybe six or seven years ago, okay. and each one has a year on it, and it has they are uh, time capsules, oh. and so when we get to the very last one, when we fill them all up, which is will be another ten years or so, we'll empty the one out that will replace and put new stuff in the next one. So every year we'll open up the time capsule. Okay. It'll be kind of cool. Okay. So we're about 10 years away from that. Okay. So. Okay. All right. We're speaking with Dr. Kelly Danfuss, Chancellor of Arkansas State University. If you have a question or a comment, you can give us a call at 870-277-1080. Again, that phone number is 870-277-1080. Or you can leave your questions or your comments on our Facebook live feed. And we got some comments already. S.L. Robinson says, good morning, Kelly K. And she asks, Will questions from the listeners from the debate, I guess, be taken? Uh, yes, and of course, we'll talk about that more later on. Travis Moore says, love Dr. Danfuss, awesome chancellor. S.L. Robinson says, congratulations on the win. It was good to have Coach Anderson back. I know Wendy has looked has looked down and smiling. Continue prayers for the family and team. Shanika Wiley says, good morning. And Cindy Corbin says, good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you that's listening morning, out there. Everyone. Good morning. All right, so Kelly, um, it, as mentioned in the feed, uh, we do have the debate coming up at 3 o'clock. But uh, you have actually personally weighed in on the Team Jonesboro proposal. Uh, so just kind of what, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I don't like to get too involved um, in local politics. It's, okay. it's not, a, a, especially in my position, it's very difficult to do. So I, I, all, the, all the statements I've made have been as a, as a citizen, a okay. private citizen. And I, I believe, first... As a private citizen, I have the right to say, to voice my opinion. And absolutely, and, right. and I do understand. I'm yeah. the same way. I always, when I do say something, I say these thoughts are my own. These are my own, and not not reflective of the person uh, uh, of the of the, uh, the entity, the, the entity that I work for, or the people that supervise me. You know, these are, or and I'm not speaking on behalf of the people who work at the same institution I work at. And so, here's here's my thought again, as a private citizen is that I have seen uh, I have seen this work in places I've been to before and I shared a video online uh, recently of the experience in Oklahoma City when we moved there in 1997 they had just passed what was called the MAPS tax the metropolitan area I don't know if I can remember what the P's all projects I think um, and they what they had done was they had a temporary tax and there it was only for five years instead of 12 because they had a much larger tax base okay. and they said we want to improve the downtown area because the downtown area was all the abandoned brick um, factories and warehouses and when we got there in 1997 this is a couple years after past the first thing they were building was the Bricktown ballpark which is a triple-a baseball team the triple-a baseball team played outside of town on the edge of town at the old 89er Stadium, and they were bringing, bringing the new baseball park into downtown. And, and the baseball park was going to be the anchor for all the activities in what was going to be called the Bricktown area. And we, uh, someone took me a tour of that area, and they said, we're going to have uh, a basketball, well, actually, they call it a hockey arena, because they thought they'd get a hockey team here in Oklahoma City. Uh, there was a thought about getting an NHL team. They wanted to have a pro pro team there okay. um, and then the bat and then the baseball stadium and then in between all those factories are going to get turned into restaurants and clubs and bars and they're moving a movie theater downtown and so on and so they used that the maps money to build a ballpark and and to renovate a bunch of space and they also said we're going to build a canal they're going to tear out some of the streets and build a canal there kind of like you see in uh, the Riverwalk in San Antonio and I heard they can Oklahoma City is going to get like a river walk. That's just <laughs> crazy. It just seems so out there. 
And why would an NHL team want to come to Oklahoma City? It seemed kind of weird as well. And I'm a big hockey guy, I would have loved to have seen it. But, um, and sure enough, they built the baseball team. The baseball park is incredible, and it really is the, that's where the Big 12 tournament plays now. Okay. So before, they never would have come to Oklahoma City, but they play there. Um, and then they built what later became called the Ford Center. Um, now it's called, I can't remember what they, what they call it now, but another company has paid, to, or Ch it's called Chesapeake Arena now. And um, without that arena, uh, and without that baseball park, a lot of things wouldn't have happened, okay. including the, the gentrification of that whole area down there. But eventually the, uh, you know, there's a big hur hurricane, Katrina came, and the NBA had to get the Hornets out of New Orleans, and so they had an empty arena sitting in Oklahoma City, wow. and they said, well, let's move the, the Hornets to Oklahoma City. They went there for two years, and the attendance was out the roof, and people were so excited to be there. And so then when the Hornets left, eventually the thunder came in from Seattle. It was Seattle Supersonics. So you got a AAA baseball team, you got an NBA team, and uh, and then you start having these buildings being built around there and, and again, cleaning up old factories and then building the, they actually built, uh, they dammed up the river and they built this canal downtown. And Bricktown now is the place to go. If you go to Oklahoma City, you're gonna go to Bricktown. And that's where they, you go see a movie, you go go to restaurants and clubs and it's, that whole place has become a much better place to be now. And I've, saw, I've seen how they've changed Oklahoma City by use of a tax. Uh, same thing happened when they decided to uh, extend the tax and do some other projects. They said they wanted to do something, maps for kids. Uh, Oklahoma City had, had a bunch of schools with no air conditioning in them. And they couldn't afford to put air conditioning in, so they did a tax and they put air conditioning in the schools. So changing the quality of the schools. So I've seen Oklahoma City transform itself tremendously okay. by taxing themselves. And, the great thing is that all the money that's raised uh, through these taxes stay locally and local people decide how the money gets spent. And so that's that's all I'm saying is I've seen this work in other places and uh, Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma City is a great example of how it can work um, and I hope that it can work here the same way that it can really change. Uh, oh, Jonesboro is already a great place to come to. I came here. Um, uh, I didn't have to. I came here, though. I like. I love being here. I'm uh, glad that you came. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but I think there are things we can do a little differently if we had a little bit more resources. We don't have them right now, and you know we're really uh, have a rel relatively small uh, tax burden in Jonesboro, um, and with with you know an extra penny on every dollar that I spend has a po can have a positive impact on pl things that. That um, that I I may never use these things. I don't I'm, you know I don't know what will be built, uh, but the things that will be built I think will benefit someone like like you or your your children. Um, maybe when my kids have kids, they bring their grandkids here, and I can take them somewhere and so on. Um, but it's very unlikely I'll use these things. But I'm willing to give money to help other people have a better life. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and you actually had a lot to say that wasn't expected. There. Sorry, that was a lot. <laughs> All right, and. Um, Amanda Denover says, glad that you are here. All right, so we do have our intern who is an Arkansas State University student, Ms. Tamara. And Tamara actually has a question for you. Um, Come up to the mic. Come on, Tamara. Why don't the softball team receive scholarship? Now, I wish they did. So we don't have, that's a great question. Um, and we don't have an NCAA-sponsored softball team. And I wish we did. Um, is that something you could work with Terry to yeah, it's something uh, get going? We, we talk about it quite a bit, actually. Um, it, it takes, uh, it's a little harder than you think to put together, uh, to sponsor a program. We, we need to do that. I think it'd be, um, if we're going to add a team, that's the team we would add. Um, we do have a, a softball program, and they're really, really good. They won a national championship uh, in 2017, so they're really fantastic. Um, but... Uh, you have to have a stadium, which you don't have right now, and you can't use the baseball stadium. So if you had, say we didn't have women's basketball, we could start women's basketball today because we already have a basketball court. They use the same court. Well, well, is there a particular reason why the stadium couldn't be used? Well, because the field configuration is different. Oh, okay. It's a much smaller infield and smaller outfield. So maybe, maybe so. Terry could get a, another huge sponsor, get sell some naming <laughs> rights, and that's, then take that money to fix it up. That's that's what we need. We need we need to build. We need to raise some private money to build a new building. We would have to hire a coach, and then you have to um, buy equipment, and then you got to recruit players and so on. So really, it takes uh, will take some dedicated effort by us to raise to raise some money to uh, build a building and then to um, hire a coach and then get the equipment and then start recruiting players. Even if we said today we're gonna do it, it'd still be a couple of years before we actually had a team. Um, the other thing that's also difficult is that 
we as students, you're paying a fee, a student athlete fee right now. And it's actually a pretty low fee compared to the rest of the state. Um, you don't pay as much as a lot of other schools students pay, uh, but we'd probably have to raise that fee to get more money to pay for the coach and the players and the scholarships. And I'd have to, you know, we have to have a conversation with the students before we do that because I don't like to raise fees if I can help it. So it's it's an expensive venture to do, um, but it's it's something that I'm dedicated on working on. I've I've been talking with Terry about this since before I got here, I mean, it was a conversation we had even before I was hired about softball because it's one of my favorite sports to watch. It's a great sport. In less than two hours, the game is over, so you don't have to be out there for a long time. Like football, you never know. Baseball, <laughs> you can be out there for five or six hours, but uh, football, four hours. But softball's a two-hour sport. Uh, I love women's sports. Uh, uh, I love seeing women getting scholarships um, and um, uh, getting access to a university in a way that they couldn't otherwise. Um, and I love supporting women's athletics and it's so and we want to have want to make sure that our student female student athletes have as many scholarship opportunities as our male student athletes um, and so and, and softball is a, a really hot sport right now so, all right so yeah, that's a great question yeah there you have it see <laughs> see we train up those future yeah, red wolves that's right <laughs> all righty so Q, we got about, about 50 seconds left on the statement you had a quick question before we well, go to break my questions can wait to after the break, but they incorporate, um, one, um, providing a space. I know that minority students are very welcome on the campus of Arkansas State. Um, there was a story I ran across, and I'll get more in detail. The story, I don't want to focus on the people in the story, but just the aspects of it where a player from a school in Arkansas either, and it's still questionable. He basically just, because of the way you know, that he chose to express himself, um, basically he was dismissed. Um, he wore dreadlocks, and so he recorded uh, a conversation with the coach. And so, anyway, I'll get more into my. And statement. of course, we'll talk about all of the happenings that are going on at Arkansas State University. Which is always it's a pleasure to have the chancellor on. He tells it to call him Kelly. So, That's right. So you know, I'm getting ready to do what I do, which he loves so much. So K this is it. L E K. This is Community Conversations on K L E K 102.5 FM. Listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Why do we still get frustrated in our marriage? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. My wife Susan and I just celebrated 24 years of marriage. After more than two decades together, you'd think we'd always have smooth sailing, but we don't. We both work really hard to have a great marriage. So why can't we get it all together? It's our selfish nature. We want things from each other that we don't always get. She wants me to cherish, affirm, and encourage her. I want her physical affection. So what should we do? First, we need to remember that we don't always get what we want when we want it. Second, we need to stay focused on serving and giving giving selflessly and sacrificially to each other. Remember, your family first. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A 1908.com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Anointed Pro Lube, 1216 East Johnson Avenue, serves the Jonesboro community inspired by Philippians 413. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. They offer brake service, oil changes, tire plugs, basic tune-ups, wiper blade changes, bulb changes, and coolant system flushes. Open Monday, Thursday, and Friday, 8 to 5, Tuesday and Wednesday, 8 to 4, and Saturday, 8 to 2. More information, 870-520-5039. Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible. 
but with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. With the motto of invest in your future, not your landlords, Sonia Sanders Realtor is there for you throughout the entire process, whether buying or selling a home. Listings and other information is available at soldinjonesboro.com, Sonia Sanders Realtor on Facebook, or 870-275-8712. Hi, I'm R. Dub, host of Sunday Night Slow Jams, with a special invitation to join me this Sunday night. We're going to slow it down and make the most of the last few moments of your weekend with slow jams and special expressions to the ones you love. So come on through and bring a friend. I'll see you for Sunday Night Slow Jams. Sundays from 8 to midnight on 102.5 KLEK. The Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated was established on June 28, 1997 by 13 dynamic women who accepted the challenge of chartering the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter. Today, the chapter continues to impact the Jonesboro community by sponsoring programs such as the Sonia D. Williams Scholarship Breakfast, Community Back to School Bash, Delta Academy, Voter Registration Drive, and Autism Awareness. Our focus correlates with the national theme, Joy in Our Sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. Our chapter supports Delta's five-point programmatic thrust, economic development, educational development, international awareness and involvement, physical and mental health, and political awareness and involvement. More information about the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated is available at www.jonesboroalumnidst.org or via email jonesboroalumni at live.com. KLEK is starting a new fundraiser which will allow listeners to donate to KLEK while buying groceries. KLEK is a part of the Kroger Community Rewards fundraising program. When shoppers visit a participating Kroger and scan his or her Kroger Plus Shoppers card, a portion of the savings goes back to KLEK to help keep it on the air. Details on how to sign up for the program are available at KrogerCommunityRewards.com and at KLEKFM.org. This is a KLEK fundraiser. Razor. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And we're back on Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM with our guest, Arkansas State University Chancellor, Dr. Kelly Danfuss. And, of course, if you have Hello. a question or a comment, you can give us a call at 870-277-1080 or leave your questions or comments on our live feed. So I believe Quabila had a question before we went to break. Yes, so there's a school in Arkansas that's facing some criticism. Well, in particular, a coach. And I won't give the details. People can look up the story if they want to, because that's not the part, the basis of my question. Um, in the story, though, there was a student uh, athlete who was, and this, the details are still fuzzy, whether he was dismissed or he left the team due to um, feeling discriminated against by this coach because of the way he, wear, he wore his hair. And so he recorded, there is a recording, short recording, uh, conversation between him and the coach and he expressed how he felt about the situation and the coach you know said that I probably won't recruit any more students you know that have your type of hair and so that left a bad taste in the student's mouth and other people that have watched the story so well you've been a chancellor here and you know having a close relationship with the sports um, program and it can be also because Arkansas State University is what they call a PWI um, do you feel that it's important to have those spaces for minority students to feel safe and comfortable? Well, not just the minority students, but your international students as well. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I, I have heard about the story, and it's very disappointing. Uh, and I certainly can't comment on what happens at other universities, but um, it's disappointing to me to hear about young people um, being put in a situation like, like this young man was. And, your and he was from Oklahoma, too. Yeah, and, and the question is really about about protecting your students in all areas of their life and, and, and making students feel comfortable. And every university struggles with that at some area that st where students don't feel comfortable. And you know, we were talking a little bit off air about being a transfer student. And you know, I went to a community college and then I went and worked in prison for a while and I went back to school at a school a lot like Arkansas State, Sam Houston State was the name of the school. And I was a little bit older, and so I was—I I remember being feeling kind of out of place. I was an international student myself. Uh, the culture was different, even though I spoke English as my my natural language. 
um, but I just felt out of place. And it would have been very easy for me to like, in fact, I felt so out of place, I almost dropped out, went back, back home. And, but there was an advisor there who kind of took me under her wing and she helped me and, and she was very strict with me and very stern and, and uh, sometimes she would get mad if I wasn't doing well in the class. And that person kind of really helped me transition and, and to find my place uh, at the university. And, and I would hope that Arkansas State is the same way. And again, we were talking about, uh, about, about how difficult it is to make that, that transition and knowing someone there that you can talk to even if it's, you know, I don't, I, I know I'm not important as a person, but my position is important. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, being, who says? You know, I, I say, I say, I know, I know me better than anybody. Well, uh, I am not yeah. important, but my position is. But, but, and but so, you, but you never know who you might inspire yeah, exactly. personally, even, even without and so, the title. And so, if someone uh, says I've got a problem with the transfer situation, I say, well, call me or email me, and I'll direct you because I know where people work and I know what people do, and I know the history of, of situations better than other people do. And, um, and it's, it's being in the position I am means I have access to um, a lot of information other people don't have and I, and I have to use my power respons responsibly to help people make that transition or help, help, help people feel safe. And every university, I think, wants all their students to feel that way, but sometimes people make decisions that are unwise and put people in a situation where they, where they don't feel comfortable. And, um, and I think there are probably times when I fall short personally or when, when our university falls short pers uh, as a university. And when we discover that, the worst thing is to say, well, it, uh, that's not important and move. Let's, you gotta get over this thing. The, the best thing to say is let's, let's fix this and let's acknowledge that we've done something wrong and address it and move on. And so, um, so for me, the college education experience is so important, not just the things you learn, but the experience of being in college and the, and the, the, the things you learn and tr you intrinsically learn about getting along with people and having a roommate and, and dealing with the stress of finals and, and all the stuff you're trying to do. All of that makes you better prepared to be a citizen in the world. And the, those things are so important, so important that if we're creating barriers where people feel like they want to drop out because they're not comfortable, because they're, they're anxious or depressed or they're not being trained very well, that's, that's a terrible thing for us because we want students to complete that degree. And so as a university, we have to look for ways to make them more comfortable. All right, so let's talk about some of the latest things that are going on. Do you have anything that you'd like to share? I'm sure there's lots of things going on that our listeners would love to know about. Well, we're really excited about a lot of things that are happening. Um, we're we're um, you know, we've worked really hard on student success uh, and make sure students, you know, just a good segue in a way, talk about how students have been successful at Arkansas State. Um, when I got here, the very first semester I was here, we lost 28% uh, of our freshman class the year before. So fall, the fall 16 class, we lost more than 27% more than of our freshman class. And, um, and that actually has been a, a problem for Arkansas State for a while. And so we put together a completion commission that is aimed at student success. And so um, the idea here is that we work very hard with freshmen and with transfer students to make sure that they um, can find their way through and then they, if they're having trouble, they can, have, they can find someone that can help them out. And so this last year and this, this year, we've had the two best years ever in retention, our freshman retention. So uh, more than 75% of our students were retained from the, fr the freshman year. Now, that still means we're losing, you know, 24% of our freshmen, but we can do, and we can do better. But you got you can only do better, you know, baby steps at a time. To, and so we, you know, ultimately our goal is to have a 85% retention because you can't say you can't have everybody stay. A lot of people come, um, and and they, you know, college is just not for them. They were not prepared or they don't want to do it, um, and uh, and they decide they want to go get the job in the workforce or whatever. And our unemployment rate is really low right now. There's so lots of jobs out there. Um, and so that, that affects people's you know, ability to stay and decision to stay. But if we can get to 85%, which is our goal, I'll feel like we're, that will put us at an echelon um, where we need to be, the, the level of places we need to be. Um, and so that's exciting to see the progress that we're making. More and more students who come here are staying here. And that means our graduation rate's going up. So if you retain people the first year, you're likely to graduate them more and more. Um, there was a time when our four-year graduation rate was about 18% and our six-year graduation rate was about 34%. So only one out of three students was graduating 
in six years, which meant only really one in three students was ever graduating from Arkansas State. That number now is closer to 45% over six years. Well, it took me seven. So. Yeah, it took you seven, yeah. yeah. And so, and, and <laughs> queen, queen was, she got there. But you got there, right? <laughs> and how great was that? One of my greatest yeah. honors was giving you your diploma. How great uh, was that? Remember that? Come, yeah, like. I know. I'm glad you did. We had a special picture to take. I remember that. Um, and and um, because you know, think about that. Think about in your own lives. What happened in your lives that caused you to start and then not finish? Well, with me, it was constant bouts of depression. I'm just thankful that A State had the counseling center to help me uh, push through. Yeah. And Q and you and I have talked about yeah. your your story. Um, I had a child early, and then life happened, and work, and all that. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then you finished, and that's the great thing about Arkansas State. We have a lot of programs allowing people to finish their degree off. And we, some, not everyone's on the same pace. It took me, it took me seven years to get my degree, because I stopped out, worked and worked for a while, and came back. And so, um, yeah, absolutely. So that, so our retention's great. Our graduation rates are really improved, uh, and that's what we're all about for sure. So. Yeah. And I think Tamara has another question. Tamara, she's it, what, yeah, she just asked you. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's she write it down. <laughs> just, just tap me on the shoulder and say you want the mic. Can you tell us? Um, about the daycare that we have on campus sure. because I know there's a lot of single moms that's in college and need help. Sure. So the daycare, uh, the, it's, it's actually called the Early Childhood Development Center and uh, it's a really neat program. It's actually designed for people who are who, who are actually struggling financially and so it's not designed for, for, for me if I had children that, of that age anymore. Um, it's, there are several grants that they've gotten from the state and from the federal government to provide this program um, and it provides uh, for some of those people almost free or or actually is free childcare on our campus they're not it's not designed for staff and students of the campus per se so you can be working um, at a local company and have to have you drop your child off daycare it actually just happens to be located on our campus um, but several of our students work there uh, several students uh, take their child there uh, several of our employees take their child there as well uh, but again it's designed for people who are who have some financial need so it's not it's not a child care for a state people it's a child care or development center for people who are pretty significant need now I go over there at least once a semester and go read with the kids I love I love kids of those age they make me feel young and make me feel tall and so uh, go over there our student athletes spend a lot of time over there uh, playing with them uh, I love seeing that and our faculty do research over there as well with the kids. And so we have uh, some faculty who do research in early, early childhood development. Uh, so I see students over there doing research. And so, but it's a tremendous resource for our community, uh, a resource for our community uh, to be able to take their child to a place like that on our campus. And I just think about the kids who are there right now whose parents are financially struggling. And they get a chance to take their child to a daycare where they can go off and get a job and go work somewhere, provide it, become a role model for their for their children. Then that children graduating from there, go into a local school, then coming to A State, getting a degree, then going to NYIT and becoming a doctor, and then living in Jonesboro and being a doctor. And I think that you you can you could never leave this campus your entire life from from being a baby to being 25 years old and become a doctor on this campus. From our childhood development center to now, you'd have to go and you have to go to school somewhere else. We don't have a high school here, but uh, but then come back here and, and get your degree uh, and then become a doctor. That's incredible. That's amazing. What steps could someone take to apply, and what is the cost? To apply for what? The daycare. Well, um, I will get you information. There's a website you can go to. Uh, I'll find out what that is and get it to you. I don't know what the. I think the costs. Get a very modest. I don't know what they what they are, but they're relatively cheap, if not free. But I want to I don't want to guarantee something I'm not sure about. But I'll get you information. Okay, send me that. You're gonna send me an inf email about something else. <laughs> okay. so he, yeah, too. you're gonna be blowing his inbox up. <laughs> I'm gonna be yeah. I'll spend the, spend the rest of the day answering tomorrow's questions. <laughs> That's fine. Got a couple of Facebook comments. Alexander Collier Senior says, "Took me seven, and I didn't walk the stage." And great question. Man, you come walk the stage. <laughs> it's hey. the best thing. Hey, so is that actually something that's possible? Is someone who may have graduated uh, but they didn't get a chance to walk, they could actually walk in a... Come, come, come back and... Because uh, technically, I graduated twice, but I didn't walk my first time, so... Uh, you, missed your, you missed your shot. But come I walked back. the second time. Come though. back and get your degree second time. Come <laughs> get a second degree. All righty, so let's kind of transition. We've been talking about um, 
the efforts to retain students. And one of the things that has been done is that the admissions office, I believe, has been reorganized. Dr. Brian Terry uh, has been doing some things. I know uh, Adrian Everett. Has, has Brian been over here, by the way? He yeah. has not. Okay. In fact, I'll I, I, I actually serve on the census committee with him. So. Okay. Yeah, I need to well, yeah, we need to get Brian in. We need to get Terry on. Uh, yeah, like yeah. one day maybe we all just uh, we need, we need to get Doctor Welch in. Have a have a A state. Yeah, just bring all the bring vice all right. bring all the vice <laughs> chancellors and just have a round table. You need to have Maurice come in talk about some of the issues we're doing. Yeah, he, we, we've we had them. It's been yeah, it's been a while though. We need to get him back. Yeah, I need to have uh, Martha Spack, our dean of students, would love to come. Okay, talk, well, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll bring, get everybody bring them all. Up. I'll get them all lined up for you. Yeah, okay, so let's let's talk about the reorganization and has it started to bear fruit? Yes, and so changing the number of students who apply and then get admitted here is a longer task than changing um, retention. So you, you can attack retention pretty quick because you already ha you already have the students here, and you can just apply programming to those students. The students who are not here, uh, who we want to come here, are more difficult because they're they're out there, and it actually it ha takes a pretty big investment to to get after those to get at those young people. Um, we have um, we had pretty small recruiting staff, which meant more, all of our staff lived here in Jonesboro, and that meant if you tried to recruit, uh, so you're from McGee, where's McGee? South Arkansas. South, yeah. So do you have someone from Arkansas State come to your high school and talk to you about Arkansas State? Did. You did. That's how. That's how you do that, Adrian right? Came. Adrian came. Right. <laughs> so, well, see, you had to invent someone who knew yeah. the town. Yeah, and so he went because that's his hometown. And so uh, we're working on that. Uh, actually, Maurice Gibson has a great program where we're recruiting our uh, minority students to go back to their high schools and recruit for us because, you know, having someone like Adrian come back to, you know, I'm sure you probably looked up to him, right? Because yeah. he's, he's much older than you. Right. But you probably said, right, that guy went to A State and he was successful. Uh, maybe I could go there. And so uh, Maurice has a great program there that's helping us recruit uh, in, in schools that we don't normally re do very well in. And um, but it takes staffing. It takes uh, it takes uh, different prioritizing of, of resources, um, and it takes a real devotion to the recruiting enterprise to get more students to apply. And so and students now apply online. So it's not you don't fill out a form anymore. You go to a website and fill things out. And we our online application process was not very attractive. Um, it you, it asked for a lot of information that we never used, so it was cumbersome. Um, and so Brian, when he got here, revamped the, the on -site, online site. We have a new program that we use that's called Slate that makes it a lot easier for people to get in, a lot easier for us to track things. So if you apply, for example, and we realize that you were missing one document, we can send you a text message now and say, hey, don't forget yeah. to upload your form. Before, we had to send you an email. If you didn't check your email, then you never, you never need to, to do that. So, um, so the process takes a long time. And so this year, we're basically the same as we were a couple of years ago. The same number of applications, same number of students. But for the fall 2020 class, we already have almost triple the number of applications for fall 2020. And that's the key is getting applications up. Because once you get applications up, then you can start admitting more people. Then you start talking to people and say, hey, tomorrow I, I saw that you you've applied and you're interested, why don't you come visit Arkansas State? And we know that if we get kids up here to Jonesboro, because uh, you don't drive through Jonesboro on the way to anywhere, unless you're going to Southeast Missouri, right, I yeah. guess. And you probably take <laughs> and, and even then, 55 you would, that yeah, way. 55, and you wouldn't really come through Jonesboro. So students don't know how beautiful our campus is and how friendly our faculty are and uh, what the town's like. Uh, I, I, I think I'm, I've always been impressed by students when they come to town and they drive around town, see all the windows painted, paint the town red kind of stuff, see how in the windows people say, hey, this is a, this is a college friendly town. And uh, it probably, you know, you probably had a, this is a lot different from McGee, right? A lot. Yeah, a lot Definitely a lot different from, from uh, Helena, yeah. West Helena. Yeah, and Helena. speaking of Helena, West Helena, Alexander Collier Sr. says, I'd love to recruit here in Helena. Sign me up. How? Yeah. Wolves up. So oh, choose, I'm, I'm going to say the same thing. Send Kelly an email. That's right. Kdamp at astate.edu or chancellor at astate.edu. So send Kelly an email and y'all make him work something we, out. We to are, a, we're working with alumni to help us recruit as well because alumni recruit, can recruit really well for us. And, 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 you know, I'm not a recruiter, but I'm recruiting all the time. I'm, <laughs> I recruit. 
I, I, if you hadn't gotten your degree, one there, selfie at a time. That's right. One, one <laughs> selfie at a time. I, I would. Uh, we can all be recruiting all the time. You guys, you three, could be recruiting for us. And, and Q, I know you do all the time. Right? I advocate for the online program, yeah. not to take away from the on-campus experience, yeah. but for those non-traditional students, especially. You know, we. I was talking to some um, students in BB, ASU BB um, Thursday, and so. ASU BB is part of our sister. It's a part of our system, and students get there get a two year d degree down there, and they can get a four year degree if they want to by coming to Jonesboro, or they can stay in, in BB and they can get the, get their degree in BB on the campus, uh, or they can do it online. And some of the people who I was talking to said, "Oh, I didn't realize the online option was possible." I said, "Yeah, because one of them was working full time." He says, "I can't go all the way to Jonesboro and take a class," and I said, "You don't have to." I've got so many, we have almost 5,000 students who are taking online degrees from us right now. And so, and those people are all, and they could never come to Jonesboro, and some of them couldn't go anywhere. I had the pleasure, privilege of taking um, one class that I needed in order to graduate on time uh, through ASU Newport online. So I was doing simultaneous, and I had to sign up basically non-degree seeking to take that one class yes. and then have a transfer. So the process to trans the transitioning is very seamless as well. Yeah. Transferring. All right. Tamara has not to interrupt. Tamara has another question. She's All on right. fire, y'all. We need to put her on full time. <laughs> you know you have some students that does not know how to fill out college applications and some students that their parents don't know how to fill out college applications as well. Okay, what so. tip could you give those students um, that need help? Okay. That is so important. So, so many of our students, and I was the same way. My mom had grade nine education. My dad had grade 12. They didn't even know what college meant, except for they knew that it was an opportunity to change my life, that I could have opportunities that they couldn't have. So my mom was always pushing college um, because she never graduated from high school. And, but she had no idea. She didn't know how, how much money to save. She had saved, they didn't save any money for college um, because we were so poor. Um, but they didn't know how to apply. And so I went to my high school counselor and, and she helped me figure that out. So high school counselors are really good at resources. Um, but you can contact us and we can help you with that. And so we've got recruiting, we've got more recruiting staff now that can walk you through that process. It's, it's a lot easier now because it's online. Um, and uh, there's another thing you didn't mention that's also important is that parents sometimes are resistant about filling up the FAFSA. And the FAFSA is so important. Some people th say, well, I don't want the government to know how much money I make. Well, the government knows because you're paying taxes. And that's really the same, it's the same information. And really what you're doing is you're reporting how much money you made on your, from your tax return. But that opens up a huge door for financial aid uh, okay. if you fill out the FAFSA. And so there are some states that are requiring high school students now to have to take the FAFSA because you're leaving a lot of money on the table if you don't. So those two things, FAFSA and applications, and we can help you with that. Okay. Great question. <laughs> All right. Tamara, she's on fire, y'all. We're going to see what she comes up with. When we come back on the other side of the break, you're tuned to Community Conversation on Kate and Lee Kate on the 2.5 FM. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmond Jr. Our Think Wealthy quote of the week comes from educator, author, and wealth expert, Dr. Dennis Kimbrell, author of The Wealth Choice, Success Secrets of Black Millionaires. The wealthy make money while the rest of us make excuses. If you knew who walks beside you on this journey called life, you would never doubt or fear again. The truth is it takes courage to get out of your comfort zone, challenge your beliefs, and defy the status quo that is the tyranny of your own mindset. The bottom line is that if you want different results, you have to make different choices. As I never tire of saying here on Money Matters, you can't change your money if you won't change your mind. The greatest resource in the world is the passionate, committed mind. What have you been sent here to do? Get more lessons of wealth from Dr. Kimbrough at DennisKimbrough.com. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters a product of American Urban Radio Networks.
Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization focused on joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears foundation at gmail.com money matters is brought to you by bank corp south offering checking savings loans credit cards and wealth management five locations in jonesboro to serve you www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800 you've heard from both sides of the one percent sales tax debate now hear both sides debate face to face for the first time ever from the KLEK studio on the radio on 102.5 FM and stream live on our Facebook page. Members of Team Jonesboro and Citizens Taxed Enough will sit face to face with hosts Babila Jones and Laganzi Kale for 90 minutes from 3 o'clock p.m. until 4.30 p.m. Monday, September 9th. Each side will debate the pros and cons of the 1% sales tax proposal. Join in on the discussion and then on Election Day, Tuesday, September 10th, vote. Note, KLEK 102.5 FM and the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council do not endorse, support, or oppose this issue. However, we encourage everyone to get out and vote. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lscihelp.com. Starks Auto Plaza at 2829 Red Wolf Boulevard is a proud KLEK supporter offering luxury pre-owned vehicles sold wholesale to the public. At Starks, we never say no. 870-203-9980. Details at StarksAutoPlaza.com. House of Details, located at 3915 East Highland in Jonesboro, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, waxing, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup delivery, and more with the motto of anything mean we can clean. Details at 870-273-5187, House of Details on Facebook, and at KLEKFM.org. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1, 1977. Originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. KLEK 102.5 FM salutes small businesses. Small businesses promote local character and success, keeping money in the local economy, local jobs, entrepreneurship, community well-being, and so much more. Contact us today to learn more on how your small business could be featured on KLEK for as little as $25 per month. Shout out to Always and Forever Pet Grooming, offering baths, nails, and haircuts for dogs and cats. 2929 South Caraway Road, Jonesboro, 870-520-0925. 
And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And we're back on Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I guess Dr. Kelly Danfors, he unfortunately did have to leave. He has another appointment at 10 o'clock, but we definitely thank Dr. Danfors for still stopping by and just talking about all things Arkansas State University. So during the remaining time that we have on today's program, I just want to talk a little bit about the debate that is going to take place at 3 o'clock p.m. The debate will be between members of Team Jonesboro, and citizens text enough it's going to be from 3 o'clock p.m. to 4 30 p.m. so I'm going to just kind of give a little details on the format of the debate uh, there will be three people from team Jonesboro and three people from citizens text enough of course we don't don't have enough room for all of those at the table so it will actually start off with two people per side and then doing breaks so they can switch out the debate is going to take place in three phases phase one is going to be questions uh, that myself and Quibila has come up with we will ask a question each uh, person will have each side will have two minutes to answer and then two minutes to respond then doing the second segment and each of these segments will be 25 minutes by the way during the second segment this is where you all will come in we will take questions and comments from the live feed we'll try to get to as many as possible and even though it's, it'll be kind of free form but we'll try to make sure each side at least has an opportunity to answer the question and the other side to get a rebuttal and then during the third segment which will actually be interesting each side will actually ask questions of the other and of course we have instructed each side no personal tax but just keep it on the issue of the tax election itself and that will go for 25 minutes and then we will do a wrap up and then hopefully if you have not already voted you will step into the booth and make a decision of course KLK we do not endorse support or oppose the issue but we strongly encourage you to vote so Q kind of give your thoughts on on things um, on the issue at hand or well on, on the, the the debate and the issue well as i you know mentioned earlier i want the debate to be clean um and as transparent as possible because um we the citizens are making a very important decision yes or no that could you know determine a lot of things for the city and for the for the residents and and has been stated before for the children so i want I hope everyone walks away, um, people that are listening walk away with a sense of, um, okay, I know which way I'm going to go vote on this matter. Um, and I, as you mentioned, we've mentioned before, I want people to walk away from the table with a sense of we're still neighbors. We still have to live in this community together. So no matter how you feel about what has been said or what happens, we still need to come to some resolution to better this community in whatever way it needs, you know, improving. Um, I am not blind to the fact that we do need some amenities here, and we, and, and we do need you know more resources resources for police and fire as well. So, but do I have the perfect answer? No. Um, and a lot of the conversations I've had have been more: how can we start from the grassroots level, build up the community from within before we start building outside? So anyway, those are my thoughts. Well, and again, I agree. And again, um, these thoughts are my own. Jonesboro is growing regardless of how this election turns out. And with growth comes issues that will have to be addressed. And one is, you know, meeting the needs of police and fire. Not just police and fire, but you have streets, sanitation, um, yeah. and so many other departments. Uh, transportation. You know, there, there are going to be needs that are going to be addressed, both public safety and quality of life. Is the Team Jonesboro proposal the best way to go about it? I don't know, and I'm not going to comment on that because I don't want to influence anyone's opinion. But no matter how tomorrow goes, Jonesboro, now and in the future, is going to face challenges. And how we as a city go forward ultimately will depend on how we address these challenges. And hopefully, it is my hope that the community can come together and figure out the best way to move this community forward. Because... No matter if you were originally from here or you've moved here and planted roots here, this is still our community. And we definitely want this community to be the best that it can possibly be. So, once again, 3 o'clock p.m., tune in live. We'll be live on the radio and live on Facebook. When we go live on Facebook, please share the video. We look forward to each and every one of your comments and participation because we educate, we entertain, we empower, we do a few. And also, don't forget, 
Our pledge drive, our fund drive is coming up September 22nd through the 28th. We're looking to raise $20,000. We're also looking to get 100 donors donating at least $20 per month so that we can continue to provide things such as the debate. You don't have to wait until the drive starts. You can go on our website, klekfm.org, and make your donation today. We definitely appreciate everyone that donates, everyone that supports, everyone that underwrites, everyone that sponsors, and more. Of course, everyone that listens. Tamara, you have any comments? We're gonna let we're gonna let you take us out in these last few seconds. Put you on the spot there. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Kaylee K. This is Tamara, and we are out. <laughs> All right, we got a final Facebook comment from Sandra Smith says, Thank you for sharing this information with our community. We do it just for you. You guys have a great and blessed day, and we'll see you at three o'clock. This is K L E K on two point five FM. Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Broadcasting from the First National Bank Tower, this is KLEKLP Jonesboro.